Hey, how's it going, man? Hello? Huh? Ah, welcome to Retro Refresh. Sorry, sometimes I get really into this Tolkien stuff. What can I do for you, kid? Actually, I... Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you one of those guys from that YouTube gaming channel? What's it called? Uh, uh, gaming off the grid. Yeah, that's it. No, no, wait. No, no, that's not right. Oh, Chris from Telesplash Gaming. No, no, that's not right. You're too fat to be Chris. Uh, you're not as charming either. Uh, Sean from the Nerd Lair. I'm in here like five times a week, dude. Huh, the Nerd Lair? Never heard of you. Look, can I just get the Xbox Live starter kit, the one that comes with Mech Assault, before I hang myself in the Dreamcast section? Hey, 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 calm down. I was just trolling you, so to speak. <laughs> anyway, I got one right here. It's the last one. You know, I hear this game and Xbox Live stuff is supposed to be pretty revolutionary. Don't spend too much time on this, kid. There's a real world out there for you. Or maybe not. I, I don't care either way. Thanks. Yeah, I've heard good things about it too. That's why I'm picking it up. Something about giant robots that just gets my dick hard, you know? You know, as a matter of fact, I do. Anyway, kid, enjoy. Come in again. Yeah. See ya. Huh. Mech Assault was released for Xbox consoles November 15, 2002. It was developed by Day One Studios and published by Microsoft. For all of those who are unaware, Mech Assault takes place in the nearly forgotten sci-fi universe of Battletech. At its most popular point in the late 1980s, it was a highly successful mech role-playing game franchise. There was PC games, tabletop RPGs, novels, and even toys. But for the plot of Mech Assault, it centers around an inhabited planet called Helios in a dominion of the Inner Sphere. Which which is a powerful coalition of feuding factions that are fighting to take control of large areas of space. Mech Assault's single-player campaign consists of a mere 20 missions that all focus around mech combat, as well as clearing out cities with loads of armor and ammo pickups sprinkled around the level. One of the biggest draws for me with this game, and it was something pretty innovative back then, was the destructible terrain, which a lot of games didn't really have back in 2002. You'll acquire multiple different mechs that you can pilot throughout the campaign, each one with its own unique looks, stats, and attacks, which is something that really helps the slightly monotonous gameplay. Though really fun, all of the missions are more or less the same. I have to say, the thing that makes this game so awesome is the combat and controls. It's all very engaging, with lots of strafing, strategic use of weaponry, and a physics engine that really makes you feel like you're connecting shots with another mech. It's really chunky and really satisfying. More often than not, you're going to be fighting enemy mechs in an area that has buildings that you can use offensive or defensively. So there's definitely an advantage to you not flattening an entire city before killing all of the enemy targets because you can hide behind those buildings or you can use them to do damage to your enemy. But the landscape isn't so much dotted with buildings in amongst the hordes of enemies. There's also huge rolling hills, ridges, and tunnel systems that make for great scenery. There's actually quite a bit of diversity between all of the levels. Everything looks different, which is good. And everything's destructible, which is even better. I wish I could say that for the enemies in this game, because yeah, there are different mechs, but there's also mobile tanks, there's mounted cannons, and there's foot soldiers, and that's really about it. But one of the things that never got old with the enemies was stepping on the foot soldiers with your mech and watching them explode like a watermelon. There's only one real complaint I have with the single player campaign in that it's just too short. You can beat it within 5-6 to six hours, give or take an hour for replaying missions that you might have died on because there's no midway save points in the level, which isn't really that big of a deal because the game isn't that hard, but redoing levels in any game is just a pain in the ass and I'd rather not do it. Let's be honest though, if you bought this game when it first came out, you only had one thing on your mind and it wasn't the single player campaign, it was the online multiplayer. And that right there is is the main reason why this game was so successful and so universally loved to this day because the Xbox Live multiplayer for it was amazing. You know, Mech Assault was my very first introduction to Xbox Live. I still remember the day like it was yesterday. I went over to my buddy's house. He had just gotten the whole setup. He always got everything. 
the best of the best. <laughs> he was one of those kids. And he was in the middle of a match when I walked in. He was talking to his teammates. They were screaming over voice chat. And it was flashy. It was fast. It was just cool. And right then and there, it just blew my mind and I was sold. I had to get Xbox Live and this game. And I did. Getting online with Mech Assault via Xbox Live was super streamlined. First off, you just needed to get an Xbox Live account, usually a prepaid card that you could punch in a code and it would give you online service for 3 to 12 months. And lastly, if you don't have a cable modem, then you probably won't have a good time on Xbox Live. But let's get into the actual gameplay. The player chooses whether he wants to join a game that's already in progress or host your own game. Games consist of up to 8 players dashing around in a deathmatch or a last man standing mode. From there, you can either choose to do a free-for-all or team deathmatch. For me personally, I always found it more enjoyable to play the 4v4 team deathmatches because I like working with a team. I like teamwork. It's something that is just really fun, especially when you have people that know what they're doing and can have a good laugh and, you know, trash talk, all of that classic online gaming stuff. It was just so fun. And a big part of that was because you could communicate with your teammates via voice chat using the headset. And one of the creepy yet kind of quirky things about OG Xbox Live was that you could have a voice mask for your microphone. Meaning if you didn't want people online to know if you were a guy or a girl and kind of wanted to stay anonymous, you could mask your voice and make it sound like this. Or like this. Or like this. And it made trash talking pretty hilarious. Is it any wonder that this game was so successful? By July 2006, Mech Assault had sold over 750,000 copies of the game and earned over $26 million in the US alone. It was also ranked by Next Generation as the 85th highest selling game of all time between 2000 and 2006 in the United States. It's no surprise that this game became an instant classic and after 18 years, it still holds up to this day, which is testament to how awesome it really was. Ah, sigh of relief. I don't really have that many bad things to say about this game. The only gripe I have is that the main story campaign is a little bit short, and really, you got hundreds of hours of Xbox Live play with this game. So, I mean, I can't knock it too much. It's basically just nitpicking at this point. And for me, Mech Assault brought me some of the best memories of my teen years. I played this with all of my friends all throughout high school, and it was just something that will always stick in my memory. Those hot summer nights with LAN parties and energy drinks and your friends just having a good time. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you like this video, stay tuned for the next one where I talk about another game that was only on Xbox. Hey, thanks for staying till the end of the video. You're awesome. If you enjoyed this, hit the like and subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss an upload. And if you have a favorite only on Xbox game you want me to review, let me know what it is down in the comments section. Also, check out my other only on Xbox episodes. If you like this one, you might like those as well. See you next time.